It is opening day at Del Mar, and our feature race, our DRF Bets Wednesday race of the day, is the traditional opening day feature. It is the Oceanside Stakes for three-year-olds. I'm Dan Elman. This is Matt Bernier. You know this is the DRF Bets race of the day, and if you want to bet, get in on any of the action on opening day at Del Mar, this is the way to do it. $100 in free cash available to new DRF bet signups. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Here's the field for the Oceanside. And Matt, it seems every year the Oceanside is just a wide open race of three-year-olds going a mile on the turf. And this year, your morning line favorite is four to one, the number five Desert Stone. Yeah, and you know what? Even if Desert Stone, who I think has a big chance to win this race, I picked him second, even if he wins, you're probably looking at a mutual around $10. So, I mean, this race, like you say, year in and year out, it's an absolute scramble. And on the flip side, I have to be honest with you, I wouldn't be stunned at all if a 15 to one shot won this race. And remember friends, you can access free formulator pass performances for the opening day feature, the Oceanside Stakes, on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one Arrowack with Gary Stevens aboard at six to one on the morning line. And Arrowack's graded stakes placed on synthetic mat. He's still seeking his first turf win 0 for 5 on the surface. You know, he's probably a little bit better than I've ever given him credit for. His run two starts back in that American turf. It wasn't that bad. He was over yielding ground. He's only beaten by two lengths. Now that race has come back hit or miss at this point. But I, like I said, I think he's probably a little bit better than I've given him credit for. I think he has a puncher's chance in here. But again, I guess it comes down to price. And if you're looking at five to one on him as opposed to 10 to one on some other interesting contenders, I would go with the longer price. If he runs on his American turf. He's got a big chance, as you alluded to. That was a good performance. He kind of made a little bit of an early move into a hot pace and he flattened out late. And last time out, just a 180 degree different scenario than what he's going to face on Wednesday. A short field, a slow pace, and he had to be close. I think he is a true deep closer, which means he's going to need pace and race luck, but on his very best, he could be there. I agree with you about the price as well. Six to one seems a little light. The two is Texas Wedge, and Texas Wedge, along with the number four, RDB Good, look very similar on paper. These are horses that came off long layoffs, going down the hill, sprinting against older horses, and I think both of them got useful preps. Texas Wedge, career best buyer of 90, his only bad race against both Dioro and last year's front runner. Yeah, and you know, the good thing about a horse like Texas Wedge, he's got that versatility where he's not going to have to come from 15 out of it, but he also doesn't need to contest the pace. I think he could work at a really nice trip in here. Peter Miller, this is a move that he's had success with in the past. You get Flavian Pratt aboard, who is perennially sort of the leading rider or one of the contenders down there at Del Mar. I think this horse is a big, big chance, especially if this pace ends up being a little bit more moderate than perhaps it looks like it could on paper. He could sit a perfect trip. I think he can outfoot Arawak, get to the inside, and save that valuable ground going into the first turn. He seemed a little bit green going down the hill last time out, but ended up in behind horses, I thought, for most of the way. He galloped out great, and I think that bodes well for his first time around two turns on turf. The three is Pepe Tono, who finished behind Desert Stone last time out in his turf debut. All things considered, I thought it was an okay race. And talk about a horse who is still unexposed. Twice in against Justify, once in against Kanthaka, then you got Dark Vader, Lombo, good horses. This horse really, you know, has taken on some tough, tough competition and a fast pace helps him out. Yeah, absolutely. You know his game. He's going to be coming from the back of the pack, make that one run. The turf, we still don't know. I mean, I thought he ran just fine in that most recent start. You think he takes a step forward here with some pace. He's interesting at a big, big price. RDB Good, like Texas Wedge, came off a long layoff to make his seasonal debut against those older foes in that optional claiming race. And he ran right up into traffic, I thought, in mid-stretch when it looked like he was going to run. Uh, the young seven-pound bug rider I had to alter him all the way to the to uh, mid uh, middle of the course in the stretch. And I thought he came with a good run, all things considering. I thought it was a perfect prep. And this one showed he could go two turns on dirt last year. Yeah, I, I thought he was a little bit green down the lane, but I, I have to be honest, part of that was probably because of that sort of just severe altering out into the middle of the racetrack. You brought up the bug. I think Espinosa is a good rider. I think maybe he made a little bit of a tactical error there where wheel him out earlier when you hit the dirt crossing. The fact that that was his first time on turf going down the hill, and this is the spot that they choose to run in. To me, it feels like Billy Morey has had this race circled kind of all along, and this is a means to an end to get here. 
Four workouts, including a bullet leading up to this race. He hasn't missed a beat since that June 8th start. And you mentioned Maury, who had a really nice meet at Del Mar last year. Good formulator fact with these kind of horses. Over the past five years, three-year-old turf horses going second after the layoff. 32% winners, a $3.33 ROI. Another horse that would benefit from pace. The five, Desert Stone, couldn't do much in New York. But boy, Richard Baltus has just turned this horse's form around. Two nice wins on the turf. I thought this horse got a beautiful ride from Giovanni Franco last time out. Every move Franco made was the right one. Yeah, absolutely. And really, that kind of summed up Franco's meet down at Santa Anita. He was showcasing. He's got some real skills. Uh, this horse, although he looks a little bit slow on paper, I think he's probably better than what the figures would indicate. You're right. He had a perfect trip, but there's a part of me that thinks that I've thought all along that there was some talent here. It just took him getting out to Southern California to really show it. I, again, I, it really comes down to price. I mean, if he's going to be seven to two in a race like this, I'm not that interested. But I think he is one of the more likely win candidates in here. We mentioned Pepe Tono's form being dirtied up, considering the competition he's been in against. How about Shane Zane? You got to throw out the Pat Day Mile. He's 84 to one. All things considered, he didn't run bad. The Sunland Derby, he's 66 to one. Time before that, Muddy Track, he's 31 to one. His two turf races, well, they leave a lot to be desired. Although that second one was against four next out winners and Publia Sire who was a really good turf force before he got hurt. Yeah, I have to be honest. He's one of the longer prices in here that I just, I understand they paid a lot of money for him. He's got a little bit of pedigree. I, I'm just not that enamored by anything he's done so far. You brought up the turf in those first two starts. Really not a heck of a lot there for me to be too excited about. He, I think he deserves to be every bit of a 20 or 30 or 40 to one chance. Restrained vengeance when his seasonal debut going down the hill flattened out a little bit in the single Terry after breaking slowly and rushing up. Last time out, they tried blinkers and the source just seemed a little bit headstrong. He kind of pulled Diego right out of the saddle to get to the front. Blinkers come off here. I'm expecting him to revert to rating tactics. I think he's OK. Not sure how good yeah. he is just yet. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, the fact that at least he, he was able to up his game to an 84, a mid-80 buyer, and that was against older horses in that most recent start. I think if at least, again, he's another one in here. I wouldn't be absolutely stunned. I'd be a little surprised if he won, but I think there's a real scenario where he can hit the board at a giant number. A lot of eyes are going to be on number eight, Faversham. Of course, a full brother to California Chrome. Blinkers off was the answer for Faversham, but it really helped that he got a fast and contested pace to run down those horses, stake-bred maidens. Big step up in class might get a similar pace situation. Yeah, I think he's going to need that similar pace situation. See, Pereira stays here as opposed to riding the other horse that he's ridden in the past. I guess the concern I have is what you brought up. That sort of pace situation that he had in that maiden special weight run, it was unbelievably fast early on. And usually, I want to see a horse... Are you finishing well? His final quarter mile was almost 24 and one. That's not all that fast in the grand scheme of things with a late kick. To me, I like him. I think there's some ability here. I just think a minor award at best. Thought move over was best two starts back in the single Terry going a mile. My trip notes and formulator have in and among and blind switched far turn, steadied bit, altered course sharply to rail mid stretch. He only got beat a half length. He came out of that effort, turned back. We love those turn backs going down the hill. And despite breaking through the gate and running off for a little bit before the start, he was able to beat those horses. Now, a thing that concerns me is that he was going to run last month and he scratched sick. He didn't lose a lot of time, but he's going to come into this race now off a two month layoff. And, and again, he's facing just such a salty group that you're really going to have to be ready to go to win it in a race like this. I think it is good no, uh, to note, though, you see those horses that he's run against. He beat Calix, man. He beat Heartful of Stars, who they're both going to be running in a spot like this. The fourth place finisher, Axelrod, we saw what he just did right. last weekend. He won the Indiana Derby on dirt. The sixth place finisher was the next out winner with an 83. So he's at least kept good company. I think if you are concerned about this horse, it's what you brought up. Is he going to be ready to go coming off of this kind of layoff? Expecting Calix, man, to make the pace time form us agrees as we cue the time form us pace projector in a big field we expect a red bar that indicates a fast face and calyx man pace pressing winner last time out he earned it going down the hill at six and a half i thought that pace was legitimate he was on it every step of the way and as the favorite he beat a couple of these horses if he's able to shake loose he is dangerous and he's already won at a mile at del mar his maiden win last year the question is how much pressure will they put on him that really is the thing that kind of turned me off to him because I, I kind of like this horse. I've liked him for some time. I think there's some ability here, but I, I kind of agree with time form. I think that red bar is accurate, but I think there's going to be a heck of a lot more company up front than just him streaking off to the front. And if he does do that, 
he's probably just going too fast in here. I do like the fact that Franco stays aboard, though. Top trainer Phil D'Amato conditions both the 11 and the 12. We'll begin with Heart Full of Stars, who was third to Calix Man last time out. And to be honest with you, I thought he had a big chance the way that pace unfolded, and he just couldn't get to Calix Man. He needs to improve. He's okay. He's consistent. He needs to improve. He'll be the bright price. I wonder if the additional distance actually works to his advantage as opposed to six and a half down the hill. You saw it. Look, the fact that D'Amato, of all people, thought enough to ship him out to New York to run in the Wood Memorial just to take a shot, but nonetheless, you got to think that there's some ability there. That, that speaks volumes to me. If this horse, again, if he can stretch out successfully, which I think he should, this is an interesting spot. D'Amato trains the 12, Soltero coming in off of a maiden win. This horse is, is pretty nice. He's yet to break 80 on the buyer plateau, but he's lightly raced. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a forward move in him, but he's likely to come have to come from farther back this time around against better horses. Yeah, and that's a concern right now. He's light on figs. He's probably going to need to show a new dimension in order to win in a race like this. To me, he's just got a lot going against him. A little disappointed that a fleet of scent couldn't get it done the last time he raced on turf in that Singletary two starts back. But, well, maybe the pace wasn't that fast. He was pressured every step of the way while down inside. And I thought it was a similar situation to his baffle four back going down the hill where he got involved in a big speed duel. He put the speed away and he tired. There are a lot of legitimate questions you have to ask about distance, whether he can win without the lead. I think they're going to concede to Calix Man and maybe even a heart full of stars or a Soltero. But I think he has done some good things on the turf. Eight to one on the morning line getting to Kent D. I think he's got a chance. I'm interested in seeing him stalk. That's really the key. If he can stalk, he's got a big chance getting the jump on the closers. That was the only concern for me is that thus far through his career, he's done his best when he is out there dictating terms on the front end. And like you say, with the horse drawn just to his inside there, I, I can't imagine them getting into some sort of crazy duel with Calix, man. I think they take off and they sit. If he can successfully rate and actually go on with it, then absolutely, he's a major player. I'm just a little bit weary about that. Two also eligibles in this field. Respect the hustle completes the horses in the main body of the race. Fourth in the rainbow last time out. This is a horse that needs a big buyer boost and will be a big price. Yeah, and you, you know what? You're going to deserve to get every bit of the 51 that he's probably going to be. He's going to need to move up. Top picks for the $100,000 Oceanside Stakes on opening day at Del Mar. You're going with a four. Already be good. This horse is 20 to one on the morning line. I'm certainly using this horse. For me, this is a spread race. Before we came on, you said this has the potential to be a chaos race. I agree. I'm going to have to pare down my multi-race bets elsewhere because this race to me is a spread. But already be good. Love that prep last time out. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, I just think it's one of those things where, again, he looked a little bit funny going down the lane. He was on his left lead, but I think a lot of that had to do with just severely being altered out into the center of the track. You brought up that formulator fact for Bill Morey. Uh, I just kind of feel like this is an interesting runner and in a race that's so competitive. I like Desert Stone. I think he fits. I think he makes a lot of sense. Just don't get robbed on a price. If he ends up being three to one, to me, that's just entirely too light. But from a multi-race standpoint, holy smokes, man, you, you hit the nail on the head. I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm probably going to, realistically, I think I would need 9 to 10 to feel super comfortable trying to get out of this. Give me numbers, 4 at least. I'm going to go <laughs> 4, 5, 9, and 1. I'm going to go with the 13 of Fleet Ascent. He's run some fast races in the past. I think he took a lot of heavy pressure while down towards the inside in his most recent turf race. His dirt race since then it was pretty good. I'd like to see him stalk and pounce this time around. 8 to 1 on the morning line is fair. I wouldn't take a dime less. I'll go 13, 2, 4, and 5 in the $100,000 Oceanside. Again, you can play it with your own DRF Bets account and the $100 in free cash that goes along with it. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Happy opening day at beautiful Del Mar on Wednesday. Approximate post time for the Oceanside, 530 Pacific. Good luck.